we're going to be looking at the factors that affect resistance and then hence resistivity. First we're going to consider a piece of wire which has length L and cross-sectional area A and it has a resistance R. If we were then to connect two identical such pieces of wire together in series, then the total length of the wire will be now 2L. It still has the same cross-sectional area A. And to get the total resistance, remember in series, resistance is add, so the total resistance will be 2R. So we've doubled our length of wire and we've also doubled our resistance. So that means the relationship between the resistance and length is that they're directly proportional to each other. They increase by the same ratio. And that is true if we've kept the cross-sectional area the same. We're now going to consider this identical piece of wire, two of them now connected in parallel. The length of the wire will be L, but now the total cross-sectional area of the wire will be 2A. To get the total resistance, we need to use the equation for resistance in parallel. So that is we add the reciprocals. So 1 divided by our total resistance will equal 1 divided by R plus 1 divided by R. So that equals 2 divided by R. To get our total then, we take the reciprocal of 2 divided by R. So that means they switch places. So our total will equal half of resistor R. So you can see that by keeping the length the same but doubling the cross-sectional area, we've halved the resistance. So the relationship between resistance and cross-sectional area is inversely proportional and we express that mathematically like this. So the 1 divided by represents the inverse relationship. So R is proportional to the inverse of A. So R is inversely proportional to A. So resistance R is directly proportional to length L if the cross-sectional area is kept the same. And resistance R is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area A if the length is kept the same. If we combine these two relationships then, we can say that R is proportional to the length divided by the cross-sectional area. And to get an equation, we need to introduce a proportionality constant. And that constant is known as resistivity, which is given the symbol rho. So we can say that the resistance is equal to the resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. This equation is showing you the three factors that affect resistance for a wire, and that is the resistivity, which is a constant for a given metal, L, the length of the wire, and A, the cross-sectional area of the wire. The resistance of the wire is also affected by the temperature of the wire, and this is given from the resistivity. So you will have different resistivity values for a metal for different temperatures. And the higher the temperature, the larger the resistivity value, and hence the higher the resistance. If we rearrange the equation for resistance in terms of resistivity, we will get its definition. So Resistivity is defined as the resistance times by the cross-sectional area and divided by the length. We can use this equation to get the units of resistivity. So that will equal the units of resistance, which is the ohms, times by the units of cross-sectional area, which is meters squared, and divided by the units of length which is meters. So we have ohm times meters squared divided by meter. 
one of the meters will cancel out. So the units of resistivity are ohm meters. So in order for you to understand what the concept of resistivity means, resistivity, its name is very similar to resistance. So it's a measure of resistance, but it's a measure of resistance when we're looking at a length of wire of one meter and a cross-sectional area of wire of one meter squared. So if L and A equals one, we can then see the resistivity will equal our resistance. So the resistivity of a material is a constant in that it does not depend upon the length of the wire or the cross-sectional area, unlike resistance. So if we wanted to identify which material was the best conductor of electricity, we would look at its resistivity value and not its resistance value, which we know would depend upon the length and cross-sectional area of the material. So this table is showing the resistivity value of three metals at 20 degrees C. So the lower the resistivity value means the lower the resistance of that material, and so the better the conductor of electricity. So you can see that silver would be a better conductor of electricity than copper, but because it's more expensive, all our wiring is made from copper 